Hello everyone and welcome to another video and first things first I just need to say an enormous thank you to all of you that have supported me from maybe not day one but throughout this whole process because as of two days ago we have successfully managed to raise just over £100,000 for Movember which is Honestly, the proudest achievement that I have to date, whether that's in fitness, whether that's in day to day life, etc. I know how much of a difference that money has made. I've seen it firsthand with the community projects it's funded. I'm fully bought into the mission of Movember to stop men dying too young. And you guys have helped support these campaigns, helped make a difference, and helped ultimately save lives. So first of all, I just need to say a massive thank you to you all, because without any of you guys, I would not have been able to achieve anything along the way. It's all very much a group effort very interactively focused and it is so, so, so not a solo effort as I will go into today. I've just been a bit of a scapegoat for the causes along the way. I've sort of helped theorize around the campaigns, but I would be absolutely nowhere without the help from other people, a few specific individuals, brands, partners, Movember themselves, etc., etc. Ultimately, all I've done for the past three years is share my story, come up with some stupid campaigns, start some conversations, and you guys have bought in, which is an amazing thing to have happened. So. What I'm going to do today is run you through my entire experience fundraising with Movember because from day one, it all started with a simple selfish reason really. I was lacking a sense of fulfillment, I was starting to suffer with depression again, and I committed to my first Movember campaign. And here we are, three and a bit years later, having raised £100,000, having made it up as we go along. So I'm going to dive into the story there, but before I do couple things to request from you. First of all, if at any stage you do enjoy the video, please do drop it a like down below and comment with your experience with men's mental health, your perspective on what needs to change next and what we can do more of to help make a change. That way I'll know that you've watched this far if you do comment down below. And thirdly, please do subscribe if you haven't already. So what I'm gonna do now is start from the top. Day one, sat in a coffee shop in Brixton where things dramatically changed. So, to start with, for a bit of context for those that might not be aware, I suffered with severe depression from 2014 to 2016, and that ultimately ended with a suicide attempt in May of 2016. Without going into too much detail there, please head to this video here, or this podcast here, where I go into much more detail on that experience, the lessons learned, etc, etc. But this video is more about the Movember campaigning, so I don't need to dwell on that too much, but if you do want that context, then please do head here or here. Thank you very much. Links in the description down below as well. That ultimately formed a big part of my life. Following my suicide attempt, I started to recover and had two to three years of just enjoying being happy. Got a grad scheme job in London where I was put through three months of sort of intensive assessments, basically, where you either got a job or you didn't at the end of it in the full-time team. So I did a three-month-long grad scheme, very short. It was actually extended to six months. So I did a six-month-long grad scheme that I was then given a job at the end of. So I was six months at university, straight into a full-time job within the London team with a major brewer. So one of the big brewing companies worldwide, I was working with them in London. For the start, I really enjoyed it. I got to meet a lot of people, have a lot of exciting conversations, go to a lot of cool events. It was great in that sense. And again, I was just enjoying being happy. I ended up getting caught a little bit in the middle of some protocol changes that cut me off at the knees a little bit from doing my job effectively, which then started to mean that I couldn't perform on my KPIs, I started to feel like I was going through the motions, etc., etc. And picture the scene, okay? So I remember this so, so well. I was sat in a coffee shop in Brixton called Stir. It's opposite the White Horse in Brixton on Brixton Hill, if anyone knows the area. I was having my usual order of a flat white and a salted caramel brownie, delicious. If you're ever in the area, please do go and say hello. And I just opened my laptop and I just got punched in the face with this white noise of anxiety, stress, pressure, and just anger and confusion all at once. And immediately, the man in me defaulted to just crack on, get on with it. What are you doing? Why, why are you sort of letting this get to you? And then I thought, you know what, Fergus? You're in a situation here that's very familiar to how you felt when you were suffering with depression. We all know how that ended. So what did I do? I sat back, I closed my laptop, and just sort of took stock for a little bit and thought, okay, what is missing? What were you missing when you suffered with depression last time? A sense of purpose, a sense of fulfillment. Okay, if that's the case now, then you need to find one. So, in honesty, the rest of that day wasn't particularly effective for my employer at the time, but I used that time to recalibrate a little bit and think, okay, what are you good at? I was good at squatting, 
So I thought, okay, what can you do with that? Let's think about it. Okay, charity. Okay, so Movember. I'd done a little bit with them with rugby in the past. I'd heard of them. They were kind of cool. They had cult status. There were motorbikes. There were guitars. There were rock stars doing etc. So it was quite a culty, cool narrative to fit into. And the moustache was ultimately a talking point. It was humorous. And most importantly, it was a bit of a smokescreen for the actual truth of what the charity was aiming to achieve. And that is the whole point of the charity because it gets men talking in ways that they normally wouldn't. But for me, it made me feel safer talking about the concept of mental health and suicide prevention conceptually because I started this campaign with no intention of sharing my story publicly. So for clarity, year one in November, I committed to a challenge in early September that was to try and squat half a million kilos in 24 hours to represent the half a million male suicides around the world every year. And I announced this campaign to the world via my personal Facebook and Instagram, didn't have any followers, didn't have any social media present whatsoever, just said, this is what I'm doing. And then within the first two weeks, I had such a positive response from those close to me, immediate social circles, etc., that I decided, you know what? I feel confident enough to share this story with the world now. So for those of you that reached out initially, thank you very much. You might not know how much of an impact you've had on me and potentially others through allowing these campaigns to happen, but you gave me the confidence to share this publicly. So two weeks later, I worked on a press release with Movember just to help itemize how I was gonna present this information to the world. Not like there were thousands of listening or anything, but it was just a big moment for me, obviously. And when I shared it with my friends, when I shared it with my broader family, the response was so overwhelmingly positive, it just made me feel like a fool for not having done it sooner. But it was the most liberating thing I've ever done. And then the campaign just grew arms and legs. So for context, I was working full time when I started this campaign and then left my job in, it was, I can't remember, it was midway through the campaign because I decided, you know what, this has become so meaningful for me, I'm gonna throw as much as I can at this and figure it out later. That's how desperate I was for this to work from an intrinsic mental health point of view because I was struggling. And this campaign gave me a real, real firework up my arse to make a change that was gonna be really positive. And all of a sudden I was having podcasts thrown at me for the first time. I was having interviews thrown at me for the first time. I was having sort of little bits of TV, little bits of radio, all through November's PR, all through just sharing my story. Honestly, that's all I did. All I did was say, look, I'm a young man who thought I was this, this is how I felt, ended in a suicide attempt, this is how I feel now. At the end of the day, that is all I have done. I have just sort of laid out how I felt, the mistakes I've made, and it's turned out to be quite relatable for a lot of other young men, because as men, we are our own worst enemies with this sort of stuff. So, I mean, loads of amazing stuff happened along the way. Some of the highlights were, I ended up squatting in front of 12,500 people at Twickenham Stoop with Harlequins. I was interviewed with Joe Marler and Adam Bishop at Harlequins as well. There was some TV time, there was some radio time, there was lots of amazing conversations along the way, spoke at corporates, spoke at schools. It was a complete whirlwind of just stuff happening and me saying yes without thinking about it. And that gave me such confidence in the course, such confidence in what I was doing, and I was honestly completely making it up as I went along. So the date was 12th of December, 2018, when I was to attempt my physical challenge. And the whole reason I did that was to draw attention to that statistic with the physical challenge so that anyone that was interested in the physical couldn't ignore the mental health side of things, if that makes sense. Long story short, had a really successful trial, trial run about four weeks beforehand where we tested the protocol we were gonna run, which was, I think it was half an hour of every minute on the minute, sets of 10 at 60 kilos, then five minutes rest and do that for as long as we could basically. And I did that for four to six hours in my trial run. I can't exactly remember, posters here but that felt really confident. So went into the attempt itself and had a decent amount of people there for the start, which was really cool, and got off to a flying start. But when the adrenaline spike dipped, when everything sort of settled into reality, I was shaking like mad, I was pale, I felt really sick. And it was my first experience of true ultra endurance, endurance depletion, fear, adrenaline, etc., all that stuff. And then after my first significant break, it was early hours of the morning, just after five hours of squatting, I'd done around 2,000 ki 2, reps at 60 kilos, and I think it was just over 125,000 kilos cumulatively. I slightly tore my MCL and sprained my patella tendon. So that's how that went. Let's have a look here. Sorry if you're squeamish. Yeah, not ideal, not ideal, but 
Then, as I was lying on the floor, crying my eyes out, thinking, you're a failure, Fergus, you've stolen people's money, what a stupid idea this was. I had so many positive messages of people that were up at 2, 3 in the morning on a school night, might I add, just saying that it didn't matter, the campaign had been such a success, this, that and the other, and it gave me the confidence to just think, you know what, the campaign was so much more important, the narrative, the concept, the community, the conversation started was so much more important, and I thought, you know what, this is just a bump in the road, the injury is going to recover, we will crack on and see how we go from there. So that was year one, and to summarise, I was completely making it up as I went along, but what I found out very quickly was just how important this was to me and just how much I could get done just by saying yes to everything, sacrificing a few things here and just chucking the kitchen sink at it with passion, care and a real fervor for making things happen. I left my job at the end of that year and had two months where I was a little bit in limbo and went into a little bit of debt and then started work for my dad's company in the Northwest Brewing again. I was in the booze trade for a few years, which is quite funny, speaking of it now. Um, and ultimately settled into year two of Movember campaigning. So year one came at a significant personal cost. It was sort of around the 1500 to 2000 pound mark. And whilst I was a grad just out of uni, that was quite a lot of money for me to be in debt to. And it took me a while to claw that back, but that is year number one. In year number one, let me just check this so we got this right. But year one was 22,381 pounds raised just by chucking the kitchen sink at it and hoping for the best. So let's get on to year number two. Okay, so the harsh lesson learned from year number one is I couldn't go any bigger, but I could go broader. And the way that I was living at the time was I was working full time for my dad. I was living at home, so I was bringing fixed costs down a little bit to pay off that debt but I was very, very hell-bent on doing something again that would make a difference the following year because I'd got a taste for the impact that could be had. I knew how meaningful it was for me per personally and I wanted to continue to push that narrative as much as I could. So basically I recovered quite quickly from my knee injury, well, as quickly as I could expect and use that time to slowly build up to my first Ironman in 2019 and then transition quickly into preparing for what I called Mega Movember. So I thought, okay, can't go bigger but can go broader. So let's do three challenges across the month. Number one ended up happening on 1st of November 2019, it was 6,890 metres of lunges to represent the 6,890 suicides in the UK and Republic of Ireland in 2018. That was a tough day out because I had had my trial run for challenge number three from Glasgow to Edinburgh two weeks beforehand, no, the weekend beforehand, so my legs were battered going into this. If you want to see the video from Glasgow to Edinburgh, go here. If you want to see the lunging video, go here. And please do enjoy watching the early iterations of my YouTube talking to camera skills as they could have been better, let's just say. Also, if you want to watch the entire prep, then I did a Movember prep series in 2019 that documented my week-by-week -week training going into it. So if you want to see how I prepared for these three events simultaneously, that's the best place to go. I say again, production quality is a little lower, talking to camera skills were a little lower, and uh, it's quite repetitive as my training was very, very analytical and by the book. On the 17th of November, I arranged a 13-man, 13-hour workout to represent the 13 male suicides a day relevant to the stats at the time. Brought together a bunch of people that I sort of knew were invested in the cause in one way or another, had a decent social reach and came together to sort of push the narrative as far and wide as we could on that day. So that happened at Whit House, London and we managed to raise an awful lot of money in one day there, which was really cool. But the whole narrative around that was that you are not alone, no man left behind, and we had 13 men going through a 13 hour workout. This was the workout here, so it was alternating 94 and 13, which is 94 male suicides a week, 13 male suicides a day. And we went through that methodically throughout the 13 hours, and there were some definite dips, some definite highs, some definite lows, but we got through it together. And that message came through really, really clear. But 29th to 30th was a 94 mile run from Loch Lomond to Edinburgh to represent 94 male suicides a week. I did actually end up running to 100 miles afterwards, but for the purposes of the narrative, it was 94 miles by the time that I finished and came into a event at Murrayfield that I'd organized. So Edinburgh Rugby were really hospitable. Couple months of planning to get people together. We brought together some local charities. We brought together some of their wellbeing committee, some players, some ex-players, some friends and family of players, and as I said, some representative from November and local mental health charities for a two-hour event. 
at 10 a.m. on the 30th when I arrived from Loch Lomond into Edinburgh. I was actually 15 minutes late, so I was 15 minutes late to my own event, but there were about 100 people attended an event at Murrayfield all about mental health, which I think was the coolest part of the whole campaign because it just shows that people will show up for this if you give them reason to do so. So I came into that, and if you want to see what that video looks like, then head to this here, and <laughs> this is where things start to get a little bit harsher and the reality of things starts to set in because as I was in the car on the way to start this run here, I got a phone call from one of the sponsors that was due to be giving me the money for it, saying that they couldn't give me a penny because it had been vetoed by the marketing director or something. So all of a sudden, the money that was required to document it professionally to the tune of 1500 quid fell to me. So two hours before I was due to start, I had this big bomb dropped on me. And this was my first real experience of having to default to neutral thinking and just accept it is what it is, not worry about it, and accept that I actually had a very long time, 22 hours and 15 minutes to be precise, to think about how I was gonna find a solution to this and if there was any workaround. Ultimately, there wasn't, and I had to front that cost myself. And this campaign actually ended up costing me about six grand all in to make happen with kit required, travel, all the sort of logistical costs and everything along the way because I couldn't really bring on any sponsors to give any cash that year because social stuff was still rising. I hadn't quite nailed the formula on how to really get people involved on this. And I just want people to understand that this is this has come at a cost. Like it's it's been hard work. It's been hard work logistically on top of a full-time job. It's been my passion, it's been what I've been doing, and it's come at a big cost to me as well. So year one and year two, I was about eight, almost 8,000 pounds in debt. So whilst I'd raised 31,354 pounds in year two, and achieved some great things along the way in the way of conversations, sort of community interaction, etc., etc., there was a cost implication. There was a time implication, there was a human capital implication. There are a lot of people volunteering, a lot of people I'm internally indebted to because of the help that they've given. But the power of that is that people have come together for the cause. So if you're listening to this and wondering, you know what, I don't think there's anyone, around, anyone out there for me, anyone out there that's listening, wanting to support, there are people out there. The best thing to do is try and reach out to find them. They might not be immediately available next to you, but there's hotlines out there, there's friends, there's family, I'm sure you can access that you can have an initial conversation with to help figure out how you want to move forward. So 31,354 pounds in year two, plus the 22,381 pounds in year one brings us to a total of this, as I actually don't have the figure here to read out on camera, but that was year two. I think the, the real dark side to all this is just how much work went on behind the scenes to make this happen. I know I've touched on it with the cost there, but getting the venues, getting the protocol, getting the, the planning, the preparation, the logistics of getting 13 blokes from all over the UK in a gym for 13 hours, getting the social mechanics together to maximize it outwardly, getting people together, getting cameras, getting all this stuff as a one-man band has been very difficult. And I don't in any way want this to sound like, oh, look at what I've managed to do because I worked my ass off to make it happen and that's something I'm very proud of because I really, really give a shit about this stuff. But I do just want people to understand that when you see people doing big challenges like this, when you see people taking on things out with their comfort zone, you think, wow, that's amazing. It's not just the physical suffering that goes into it. There's a massive back office that goes on as well and that is why if people are putting their neck out, neck out and really jumping through hoops to make things happen for a charitable cause, please do acknowledge how much is going into it and how much care and sacrifice they're making. And that is why you should donate them some of your hard-earned cash, my friends. Okay, so year number three. This was a big one and was 11 months in the making. So I was speaking with Johnny, my coach and business partner now at Omnia Performance. If you wanna go and get some screen time with him, then there's plenty of him on sort of my YouTube archive. So please go and bring yourself up to speed with Jonathan Payne right here. But basically we had a conversation early January of 2020 where I said, look, I'm thinking of doing this thing. Johnny said, that sounds cool. I'd love to be involved. Maybe we should make the narrative this year about suffering through something together because the whole point is you shouldn't suffer through things alone and you should go at them together. And I thought, you know what? That's a brilliant idea. And so was born the exact formula and mechanic for Project Vertical, which was our attempt to complete the world's first vertical marathon. So 26.2 miles that way. And the aim was to do that by accumulating that much in vertical gain. 
across 11 days as that was all the budget, timing, volunteers, etc. Time off from work would allow for. For context, I started a new job in London in February. So I was actually commuting from Edinburgh to London, February and March, and then the pandemic struck. So the plan for this was again to make it work alongside, alongside full-time work. And the premise was continually ascend and descend Ben Nevis for 11 days and we set out a plan of doing so. We announced this in August of 2020 and it was so well received from the offset. I want people to understand just how much work went into making this happen, how much support there was from brands, people, everyone was just really bought into the concept. This was the launch video here. If the mountain seems too big today, then climb a hill instead. If the morning brings you sadness, it's okay to stay in bed. If the day ahead weighs heavy, and your plans feel like a curse, there's no shame in rearranging. Don't make yourself feel worse. If a shower stings like needles and the bath feels like you'll drown. If you haven't washed your hair for days, don't throw away your crown. A day is not a lifetime. A rest is not defeat. Don't think of it as failure. Just a quiet, kind retreat. It's okay to take a moment from an anxious, fractured mind. The world will not stop turning while you get realigned. The mountain will still be there when you want to try again. You can climb it in your own time. Just love yourself till then. The narrative was really, really focused on the mountain because there's peaks and troughs, there's highs and lows, there's false summits, there's unpredictable conditions, all these things that very, very neatly metaphorize, not a word, but we're gonna go with it, our existence with mental health and how it operates for us as human beings. So Johnny and I laid this out with the intention of encouraging people to climb your own mountain. So we were gonna suffer through 11 days of pretty miserable existence to try and encourage people to start conversations that they might not otherwise have had. So the first five months of 2020 were very, very admin focused. We had a budget that we wanted to hit. We had kit that we needed to source. We had this, that, all these things to sort, all the boring back office, non-glamorous stuff that needed sorted. And honestly, by the time we got to July, early August, we really hadn't made that much tangible progress. We had a lot of really valuable conversations, but we hadn't had any money in the bank, we hadn't had any written agreements, and things were starting to get quite stressful because I'd put all my eggs in the basket of this project. And at this point, this is what I do. So I needed to sort of live up to that from, a, from an expectation point of view, whether that's putting unnecessary pressure on myself or not. I had a plan that I wanted to execute. And then August onwards, people really start to show up and I cannot thank the brands enough that were involved. They've all been absolute heroes and still got great, great relationships with all of them now. And honestly, they all bought in on premise and really didn't expect much in return. There was no, we need this much social reach, we need this much back, all this, it was, it was so value driven and that was the coolest thing about the whole project there. So before I do a bit of a debrief, please do go and watch the documentary. It was so well put together and really does show how things unfolded. But without me giving you too much detail on what happened, please do and go and watch this 
documentary here it's on my channel please do leave a comment if you go and watch it because I'd love for you to let me know what you think but long story short Johnny and I got battered about by Storm Dennis on day one up to 90 mile an hour winds and minus 19 degrees at the top so we had a brutal day out. Johnny was borderline hypothermic when he got down as he had to rescue a woman on day two, on day one, summit number two. And we were on the back foot from day one. So if we had like 100% of energy to give across the 11 days, so much more of it was used than expected on day one just because the weather was so brutal. But we got through it and we very quickly realized that the athletic goal of the vertical marathon was irrelevant now. The aim was just to continue showing up. We had to wake up every morning at 3 a.m. to the howling wind, rain outside on about four to five hours of sleep. Get up, get as much food in us as we could. It just got so horrible so fast. Go and watch the documentary and you'll see how it happened. But honestly, it was miserable. But the beauty of that project was it was a bunch of lads that came together for the cause. And actually, it was one of the most memorable, enjoyable 11 days of my life. We were suffering, we were miserable at points, yes. But some of that was some of the most memorable and enjoyable parts of my life I've had today. We were laughing, we were crying, we were being honest, we were being open. And that was just really quite meaningful. It was really an amazing experience. And I've made lasting friendships there that I hope last forever. And I think that landed really well. And what was amazing was I created a bit of a cookie jar mechanic for when we were suffering. So I put out an email address on my social media and said, look, can anyone send how they're interacting with this project, what it means to them or how it's helped them to this email address? We had over 1,200 emails before we started the project and ended up with over 2,000 by the time it finished. And the premise there was, if we were struggling, we'd dip into them and realize and remind ourselves why we were doing this. Because you'll never get through this sort of stuff if it's on ego. It needs to be intrinsically driven, otherwise you're not gonna get very far at all. And honestly, some of those messages were, hi, enjoy what you're doing, lads, crack on. We got some that were 1,500, 1,600 words long. It was amazing. Can't thank you enough how valuable all that stuff was. And we haven't even read through all of them yet. We still dip in sometimes when we kind of feel a bit up against it or or a bit stressed about the the implications of the project etc but we ultimately managed to get all the money together to have it documented have it fueled and sort of supported for 11 days and we had some people come together that helped make it happen and as i said i can't thank those people enough but there was so much in behind the scenes that became stressful it was we're going to need this additional kit here we've got this wrong we're going to need that all these little little things that you just don't think of and it was it was a real real challenge from start to finish but it's taught me so much about myself about just general how to approach these things and what the most effective way to get people involved and get interaction on the go is as we were mid pandemic we were up in fort william on work we had that signed off before anyone has a go we then appeared on the bbc one show we had a few features um, on sort of national media elsewhere and it was really well received and we managed to raise £42,547 which is absolutely incredible and part of that was because we had people interacting with the project all over the country, we had people travel up with us and they were just drawing attention to the project and helping get donations together but the money's all great, the conversations are much more important and that's why we're really doing this so I hope I'm not rambling too much and giving you some clarity on what the real challenges are here but I want people to understand as well that I was working full time for somebody else until March of 2021. So Project Vertical came off, was completed all on sort of annual leave and working around that. So it was one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do in terms of my own mental health, in terms of channeling all that. But the reward at the end of it in terms of seeing it come off and the way it did, the narrative evolved over time was so rewarding. So that's why I'm so thankful to all you guys, why I'm so glad that you all engage in such a way. But that brings us to this year, where I simply had to bridge the gap from £96,282 through to £100,000. So some of the brands that I work with directly, they all have links down below, and I cannot thank them enough and would like you to go and use those links as they are all fully bought in on value-driven premises. And it also helps me continue a relationship with them and does me a solid. So if you could do that, that would be great. Thank you very much. But also, all the brands this year came together to basically chuck in as much as they could for a massive giveaway to get some people involved to raise that money. And through that giveaway, we have collectively managed to raise enough to bring the total to £100,225, which is just unbelievable. So I cannot thank you all enough. There's no point in dwelling on this year too much. I needed a bit of a mental break 
because I've been building two businesses this year, I've gone completely self-employed, I've got bills to pay, I've got things to manage, etc., etc. And next year's project is going to blow your mind. It is the most interactive mental health project I think the world has ever seen, in the fitness industry space anyway. But I don't want to speak too far ahead because there's a lot of working parts, a lot of things that aren't yet finalised, and I don't want to speak out of turn before the project evolves again, as it is an ever-evolving beast. So, all I want to say really is that the whole reason that I've done all this is because in 2016, this was the last photo taken of me. And this was the last message that I sent to my parents a few days later before I attempted suicide. So I put on a brave face for a very long time and it was almost the death of me. And the whole purpose of this campaign, the whole purpose of your support, the whole purpose of this collective support has been to show others that you don't need to be like I was then. I've made those mistakes in the hope that others don't need to. I've shared them publicly in the hope that others don't need to. And in simple terms, the campaigning has done more for me as an individual than I ever imagined it would. But I truly, truly believe that this has been a group effort. You guys are all as much of a part of this as I am. The brands are as much of a part of this as I am. And this collective effort has been so inspiring for me as an individual and hopefully inspiring for others because it's shown that when we come together, we can achieve great things and we can change some perspectives. That's all that I can really do without additional qualifications, etc. I'm sharing my experience, I'm provoking thought and inspiring change, that's all I'm hoping to do. So I really, really do hope that you enjoyed engaging with the campaigns over the past three, four years. Next year's a big one, please do look forward to that one and beyond that, I just can't thank you guys enough for all your ongoing support. It really means a lot, it allows me to do the things that I'm good at and really think about bigger picture things that I really hope are going to change lives. So from me to you, Massive, massive thank you for everybody that's engaged over the past couple of years. Enormous thank you to anyone new around here. If you've got this far, thank you very much, and I do hope you look forward to new videos. Do remember to like the video, comment down below, and please do hit subscribe, and I will speak to you all very soon.